Okay, Kelly. They are getting that running game going, Kevin, and the way they're doing is just taking advantage of a smaller Iowa State defensive front. That offensive line is coming off the ball, and Big Alexander is coming at it. But look at special teams, Nebraska. This is their third block punt this year, a couple for a touchdown, and the defense and the special team has been carrying this team, and now the offense seems to be on track. Look out, Big 12. Look out, BCS. All right, let's get to the rest of the nation. 28-0 is our halftime score. Nebraska, number four team in the country, looking to move up a notch as they lead Iowa State. We're at intermission once again with Artie Gigantino. I'm Ron Thule. Now, Iowa State comes into this game averaging 328 yards rushing. Artie in the first half, only 33 yards running the football. Well, that, that's been problem number one. They can't sustain a running game. But the second thing is they've had eight penalties so far, and a lot of them in tough situations on third down. Nebraska, on the other hand, has rushed for 206 yards. They are really churning out the clock. They are doing a good job so far of being in rhythm with this offensive option attack. And Nebraska averaging over seven yards of play. And on the sideline, Eric Clemens had a chance to update us on Iowa State. Eric? Yeah, I caught talk with Coach Dan McCarney, Ron, just a few moments ago. He said, obviously, the penalties are killing us, but he still contends this game has not been a physical mismatch. His team has to come out and really do better work with their hands on the offensive line to create something in the running game. They're not using Darren Davis enough, create anything positive, and, of course, eliminate those holding penalties. A very tall order down by 28 against one of the best defenses in the nation, guys. Absolutely right, but Darren Davis with 23 yards has to get on track, Artie. Well, you know, those guys in the red shirts that are known as the black shirts have got something to say about that because I think Nebraska's just all over the field on defense tonight. Line drive kick will not be returned. And Nebraska's offense will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line as we open up quarter number three for Frank Solich. He was a running back here at the University of Nebraska. I remember when he was the running back coach with Tom Osborne, and he used to challenge running backs to push-ups. And Amon Green, former running back here in Nebraska, couldn't do it. You can see what Nebraska did in the first half. A couple of touchdowns, missed a field goal, another touchdown, and the half came to an end. And they almost scored on the last yeah. play. Dan Alexander just got caught from behind, which would have been very demoralizing for Iowa State. And they keep it on the ground with Alexander, left side, breaks a couple of tackles. A lot of daylight. One man to beat. And he is going to be dragged from behind at the 27-yard line by Jeff Waters. As good a run as that was, that's one of the knocks on Alexander is he doesn't have the great breakaway speed. You're going to see a little counter play up to the top. Does a good job of finding a hole, but look at the power that this young man possesses. He runs through three tackles on his way to a huge game. 54 yards on the carry. That is a career longest run for Alexander. He's now rushed for 136 yards so far tonight. Second time he's played Iowa State, second big game. Tyrone Euler, the redshirt freshman from the fullback spot on the carry, just banging his way in. But Alexander, I think we saw his power on that play. Obviously. You know, we, we talked about him before, but he, he was the, the, the first freshman in the history of Nebraska football to be the lifter of the year. He was also the state heavyweight wrestling champion when he was a senior in high school out of Missouri. So this is a powerful, talented athlete. And he's running behind that rededicated offensive line of Nebraska that has gotten leaner and bigger in the course of a year. Crouch on the option, great pitch, fumbled out of bounds. And he was hit right as he tried to get the ball to Dan Alexander. And the ball was Alexander pitched a little bit ahead of him, but it looked like Alexander stuttered a little bit on Long this surface and slipped. But you know, the ball gets knocked out of bounds, that's safe. Good job by Crouch, and as I said, the ball was a little bit ahead of Alexander, who I think his feet got caught up on this new surface. Well, the one thing about the new surface is Dan Alexander is not going to have any turf burns. Doesn't give you any no, turf no, burns. No abrasions on those things. And the players of Nebraska love the new surface here at Osborne Field. Third down and eight balls out of the 24-yard line. Trying to make something out of Dan Alexander's big run. Crouch looking deep in the end zone. Has a man. Touchdown, Bobby Newcomb. Four yards on the touchdown catch by Newcomb. 
That's his a, second receiving touchdown of the year, Artie. That's about as simple as it gets, too. It's just a sprint out play, two lead blockers, Bobby Newcomb in the slot, runs down, runs it out, a corner type pattern, touchdown. Well, we talked earlier in the evening how quick Nebraska strikes. How about a minute and 16 seconds unofficially? Josh Brown will attempt the extra point. And he splits the uprights. We saw the diverse offense in that possession by Nebraska. They run it and they throw it. All right, you're going to see Bobby Newcomb is right here. He's going to run down and out. But watch what's happened here. The fullback and the tailback get on the corner, give Crouch a little bit of time. The ball is perfectly thrown, and Bobby Newcomb runs away from the defender. Austin, Austin does a pretty good job, but he loses his feet and he stops. And as you can see, Newcomb is almost like a snake getting away from Atif Austin, the cornerback. And we talked about how they were going to try to isolate Austin and take advantage of his inexperience, and Newcomb did there. But also, we talked about Nebraska utilizing Bobby, Bobby Newcomb more and more and more, and they're just making a statement tonight with the utilization of number 12, the junior out of Albuquerque. How demoralizing is that? You come out of halftime, you get the pep talk from the coach, and wham, bam, in a minute, and. 16 seconds you find yourself down by five touchdowns. Well it is demoralizing because they know I always talked about this as a defensive coach and an offensive coach in the second half it's the first drive where you yeah, make a is. statement for the rest of the half and obviously Nebraska made the statement this time. Well Iowa State will have a chance to get the ball. Nebraska has scored at least 42 points versus Iowa State the last four years. You know, as we see Crouch here talking to Turner Gill, he is seven and two as a starter coming into this game. He's efficient. I think he's under yep. control. I think he's a cool customer when he gets his hands underneath the center and he's got to make an audible at the line of scrimmage. I think you hit it on the head when you said efficient. JJ Moses from the three. Left side splits the middle. Up to the 24 yard line, Tony Ortiz on the stop trips him up. And Moses has been very quiet so far this evening. Been a lot of running around, but not going anywhere. And he's been going there quickly. Iowa State has not played a defense as fast as Nebraska. Kansas State's got a very good defense. They run around, but believe me, this Nebraska defense is arguably the fastest defense in the Big 12 and certainly one of the fastest in the whole country in college football. Aaron Davis only 23 yards rushing the football in the first half. He is number one in the NCAA. Tony Ortiz says not today. Davis is wrapped up. The guy who makes the play though is number 19, Clint Finley. He comes off the corner on a blitz, which allows Davis to have a defensive player in his face. And you know, coming into the game, he led the nation in rushing 176.8 yards per game. Obviously tonight, 23 yards and only a 2.6 average. Loss of two on the play inside of 13 minutes here in the third. Iowa State trying to get something going offensively. Rosenfeld sees the rush, throws it out in the flat, dangerous pass, and they're going to lose yardage. The pressure was put on by Tony Ortiz on Rosenfels, but Nebraska smelled this one out from the get-go. And you're going to see Julius Jackson, number 50, appear in the picture. He hasn't had a lot of plays tonight because, quite honestly, the ball carrier hasn't gotten to him. But he has been nicknamed Captain Turnover and Magnet Fingers because all he does is when the ball is in the air or the ball is on the ground is somehow come up with it. He's been a sensational addition to this black shirt defense this year. And you can see four out of eight, 13 yards, is not going to cut it tonight for Iowa State. On third and 13, Rosenfels trying to buy some time, throws it out deep, looking for the first down, knocked out of bounds, no catch. The big time hit was put on by Keo Craver, the sophomore out of Harleton, Texas. The pass was complete, but not brought in bounds. And Craver is a phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal. And he's made the adjustment from running back to cornerback, and he plays that one just perfectly. 
Gross did a nice job just getting his hand on the football. Yeah, he even gets a coach knocked down on that one. That was, that was, was two Dan? for one. It might have been Dan McCartney. That was two for one for Kramer. That's the way his night's going right now. Gomez has had one kick blocked. Joe Walker standing on his own 34-yard line. Set to return the kick. The left-footed kicker and is blocked again. Up in the air, Iowa State comes up with it. They're going to try to advance it, and they do. But it should be a dead ball at the 25-yard line, 24-yard line. It never hit the ground. Stayed up in the air the whole time. And, Ron, that's what the officials are calling. It's Nebraska's ball on the 26-yard line. And the gentleman we were just talking about, Keo Craver, is the one that blocked that punt. Touched by the kicking team, past the line of scrimmage. It was dead at that point. First down. Great field position for Nebraska. Craver, watch him come from the left of your screen. He's got so much speed. He comes all the way across again. A wonderful job by a Nebraska player of laying out. Watch him right here. He's going to come and lay out and just get a tip of the ball. That is speed. That is athleticism. And that is determination. That's a second punt block tonight for Nebraska. Iowa State hadn't had a punt block all year up until tonight. And you know, Ron, at the beginning of the game, we talked about dominating special teams by Nebraska. That was one of the keys for them to win this football game. And so far, they have dominated the special teams area. Homecoming crowd likes what they see. They've won 30 straight homecoming games, shut out the last three homecoming opponents. Right now, still a lot of football left to be played. But Nebraska with facing second down and six, leading 35 0. Two block punts tonight. Crouch on the option, keeps it. Great ball fake, and he will walk it in. Crouch with the touchdown, but it was the ball fake that did it. His first rushing touchdown of the evening, the eighth of the year, and Dan McCartney, the steam's coming out of the ears. Call him Eric Crouch, the captain, the engineer, the architect on the field of this option offense. Because right now, he's exercising brilliance, I think, in executing this offense. And I think we saw Frank Solich smile. Nah, not yet. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> it may have been a glimmer of one. Now well, the touchdown by Eric Crouch. And the number 14, possibly the number three team in the country, leads Iowa State big. There comes. Iowa State looking to get something going offensively. Michael Brantley on the kick return. Crosses the 20 up to about the 22-yard line. Are you surprised we haven't seen a lot of reverses already by Iowa State? We thought that they would try to do a little more trickery than they have. Well, you know, I don't think they think they can run them because of the speed mm -hmm. of the Nebraska defense. Nebraska is so disciplined, but the one thing that kills counterplays and kills reverses is speed. And that's what you got with Nebraska. So I think Dan McCarty and his staff has said we want to spread the defense out a little bit and try some misdirection but they haven't been able to get any positive yardage when they have executed a misdirection type play. Well, Derek Walker back in the lineup. Davis trips his way up to the 30, maybe the 31 yard line is that black shirt defense of Nebraska has had only one opponent rush better than 60 yards for a game. That was Oklahoma State and only one 100 yard rusher. That was also versus OSU, which brings up a good point. Charlie McBride was not real pleased of his defense in the second half against Oklahoma State after getting the big lead. He but doesn't what, want to let down tonight. But what, what, what happens, you end up putting a lot of your reserves in. Oklahoma State ended up with their first team playing against Nebraska's reserves. I don't think you're going to see that too much tonight. Walker hesitating. Davis reverses his field, gets one block, gets two blocks. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage because Ralph Brown was right there to say, how do you do? The third team All-American from last year has led the black shirts and they have been everywhere. In the backfield, on the perimeter, everybody 
Carlos Polk, number 13. Everybody's part of the action for this Nebraska defense as you see Lord make a big play in the backfield. Charlie McBride is the defensive coordinator of the Nebraska Black Shirts. Now, the story is the way they got their name Black Shirts is Bob Devaney one day in practice, after practice, instructed then defensive coordinator George Kelly to go to a sporting goods shop and buy shirts, two different colors, that would distinguish the first team defense and the second team defense. George Kelly came back from the sporting goods shop with two sets of shirts, one gold and one black. The guys that were given the black jerseys was the first team defense, the gold jerseys, the second team defense. That is where the legend began. Nice. Imagine an assistant coach today going to a sporting goods shop <laughs> oh, really? to buy jerseys for a team for practice. Marcel Howard walked off gingerly for Iowa State. That black shirt started in 1964. Walker being rushed. Dumps it off, left side, passes complete up to Chris Anthony, who's mauled. Now for a Dr. Kepper, Pepper game break, let's go to Kevin Frazier in our college football Saturday studios. Possibility of a matchup, and there's another possibility here, Kevin. Don't discount now Virginia Tech making a run at the national championship before this year is over. They do it all good there. Special teams, offense, and defense. Another great kick, and Nebraska ran into their own player. And a penalty flag is thrown. This is going to be interesting on the replay. Well, it's going to be a penalty. They're saying it's against Iowa State, but it looked like the Nebraska guys collided. Now, Doug Densmore, number 24, could have violated the halo rule, which is what the officials are calling. Mm. You got to give the punt returner when he signals for a fair catch or when he's trying to catch the ball, you got to give him six feet or two yards. Now, it looked like one of his own guys banged yeah. into him. Looks like he was, if he hit him, it was blocked into him. Gomez is pleading his case. He had a great kick, and they're having the powwow with anybody who has a striped shirt. You can join it. It's a club. It's private. With so the opportunity to make a fair catch against the kicking team, the halo violation, five-yard penalty, first down. Now let's look at it again. You're going to see Densmore, number 24, right here. He cannot get closer than six feet or two yards and I, that's where it is right there but you see him getting blocked there you know what it was a good call by the officials because even though a nebraska blocker banged in the walker densmore still violated the six feet rule but we never saw him make the fair catch signal yeah, the, official, the yeah. official said he not on that replay it wasn't oh give those punt returns no, no, no. he stuck that hand up there i think Nine penalties now for Iowa State. And Eric Crouch stays in at quarterback, leading 42 to nothing. Nine minutes to go here in the third. And the option. Nothing doing. Nice play by Kevin Durandi, the sophomore out of Pella, Iowa, number 99. Big 6'5, 260 pounds. Durandi is an athlete. He's a guy that was recruited, like you said, out of Pella, Iowa, was a high school basketball player, a high school mm -hmm. sprinter. He's the type of athletes that Dan McCarty and his staff have brought into this Iowa State program, and they've really improved their athleticism by guys like him, with guys like him. Crouch is going to put it up. Has some time, lets it fly, and the pass is almost picked off. It floated a little bit on him. And Iowa State still has a lot to play for, don't they, Eric Clemens? Absolutely, they have a lot to play for, Ron, but they can't seem to get a break tonight. When they get a break like a fumbled punt, they get the halo violation and can't get a turnover. Could have led to an easy score for them. They have to get something positive going into this week. And remember, as we pointed out earlier, guys, the Nebraska Black Shirts have something to prove when they're on defense. They didn't like the way they played the second half last week against Oklahoma State. They don't plan on letting anybody score in the second half tonight. We'll see, guys. All right. Dan McCartney knows that they want to do something well, and I think it may be a substitution penalty against Nebraska. You know, Charlie McBride was talking to us about that the other day, wasn't he, already about just flying guys in left and right, and how you have to be careful now? Yeah, you have to be careful because everybody in college football, it's like the NFL, everybody substitutes. Substitution violation against the offense, five-yard penalty, 
Still third down. And the rule is you can't have 12 people in the huddle anymore. And you can't have 12 people with, you know, you can't have that 12th guy within three yards of the huddle. Otherwise, it's a violation of the rules. And I think it's fair because defensive coaches are at such a disadvantage right now because they don't know who's in the game half the time. And you like to substitute as a defensive coach with the personnel that's on the field. Third down and 19. Nebraska will keep it on the ground, looking for some running room, and they go up to the 30-yard line, and the penalty flag is thrown from deep in the secondary. Carell Buckalder needed to get up to the 36-yard line, and it may be a face mask penalty. It looks like Jeff Waters may have gotten a piece of the face mask, and that's what it is. You know, when a guy like Burkhart, Burkhart starts to get tackled, he spins, and when you spin sometimes, you end up exposing the face mask, and right there, you're going to see his face mask get ripped by number 17, Jeff Waters. You know, Waters is a, he's from California. He's a half-brother of ex-Texas A&M great, uh, Sir Parker. The other thing about that's, Buck Alter that, that that's tough. He runs straight up a lot. You know, he's not a guy that buries his shoulders. That's Damian Gross, the wide receiver for Iowa State. They're working on his shoulder, going to put a little ice on it. The pads are off, and that's not a good sign. But it's a first down for Nebraska. Crouch's pass is complete. Tom Beveridge, the junior out of Sutherland, Nebraska. A lot of the youngsters getting playing time, and even on the sideline, number 11, Joe Chrisman, 5'11". Youngster out of Longmont, Colorado, may be coming in at quarterback. The second team quarterback, Jeff Perino, is banged up a little bit. So this freshman out of Longmont, Joe Christman, might get a little playing time. How about that? You walk on, next thing you know, you're in front of 78,000. Only in Lincoln, Nebraska. Absolutely. I was going to say only in America. <laughs> yeah, well, but only in Lincoln, Nebraska. I think it's synonymous, Lincoln in America. <laughs> it's the heart of America. Straight up the middle. Look out. The spin move, Buckholder, down to the 20-yard line. Pick up of 26 on the play before Reggie Hayward drags him down. Russ Hochstein and Dave Folk watch the right guard and right tackle pull and just do a great job of making a hole up inside for Buckholder. Watch the left tackle come across. Bang, gets up in there. Number 66, Rutherford does an excellent job of clearing out the defensive end. Good offensive line play. And the one thing about this offensive line from Nebraska, they all look and block the same. Absolutely. Right side, again, finding running room is Buckalder. They're going to mark him out at the eight-yard line to pick up 11 for Carell Buckalder. Listen in. Well, Iowa State, or I should say Nebraska, had only one 100-yard rusher coming into tonight, and now they have two in this game. Tanner with 135, Buck Calder with 127. How about almost a 10-yard average of carry? The longest run was 26 on the previous play. First down, goal to go on the seven. Pads are popping down to the five-yard line, and we have a penalty, or a fumble, I should say, and Iowa State's got it. May Ab Turner, the junior out of El Cajon, California, suspended earlier in the year by from the team, back on the team, and he recovers the fumble. Last week, Nebraska no turnovers. That's their first fumble this evening. 17 on the year. They've lost eight. Something that if you run a ball control option type of offense, you gotta hold on to the football. Now it's not gonna have an out, you know, right. an effect on the outcome in this football game. But however, Frank Solich doesn't like it because you want to hold on to the football. Because we talked about yesterday with Frank about going from being a good football team to a great football team, and it's things like penalties, holding on to the football that elevates you to that next level. And they're awful close to being great, absolutely, if not great already. It is loud. Right side of the Iowa State offensive line move. This is a tough situation for Iowa State to be in. It's loud in this stadium. You're in your own end zone. Little Proud tough situation. Snap. False start. 
on the offense. Half the distance to go. Still first down. It looked like Warren Kaiser right here, number 31. He twitches a little bit, and what it does, it makes Mike Banks the tight end move. So a little trickery that time by the defensive line from Nebraska forces Iowa mm. State's tight end to move. Tenth penalty of the evening. Sage Rosenfels back in at quarterback. They keep it on the ground. Davis, the nation's leading rusher, is stopped. He has been stonewalled all evening. Still hasn't cracked the 35-yard barrier rushing the football. Where he makes most of his yards is on the cutback type play. But the cutback holes have not been there tonight. The linebackers from Nebraska have been brilliant in their ability to fill the gaps and fill the holes and play the backside of this Iowa State rushing attack. That is why Darren Davis right now, the nation's leading rusher, only has 36 yards so far. You can see his season average. Second down and 12. The pitch, looking to throw. Davis lets it fly, has a man. It's complete up to the 33-yard line, up to Ennis Haywood. His backfield counterpart, and we show the versatility of Terran Davis. And you're going to see Nebraska's got a whole bunch of guys on the line of scrimmage. But watch Haywood right here. He goes up the field, number two. Darren Davis puts the ball up. The Nebraska secondary that time was confused as to whether it was run or pass. Mike Brown comes over and ends up making the play, but too late. He doesn't get confused too often. He doesn't get confused too often. If he has any problems, it's being over-aggressive, and that's a good thing. Pickup of 27 out of the, on the play, so Iowa State out of a little hole momentarily. Rosenfels off into the flat. Davis trying to get away. Not much running room because Keo Craver wrapped him up. We've seen the progression of Keo Craver since his freshman year, and he is becoming more and more disciplined in that quarterback spot. Well, he was a running back like we talked about in high school. He had 50 rushing touchdowns and over 3,000 yards his senior year. So he's a guy that's made the move from great running back from a great program in Texas to now the cornerback position here at, at, at Nebraska. You can see, you know, he started six games, but this group, as we've talked about, the entire secondary has 123 starts, which means a lot of experience. Pick up a one on the play. Rosenfeld being rushed. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Kenyatta Burris, the senior out of Granada Hills, California. Well, J.J. Moses has been very, very quiet tonight for Iowa State, and for very good reason. The black shirts have been all over him, especially downfield. DeWan Gross, number five, covers J.J. Moses. Now, he, he, the reason he's been quiet is because guys like Gross have been blanketing him, so to speak, all evening long. Hard to throw to those guys, Ron, Boy. if they're not open. Plus, plus, the quarterbacks from Iowa State have not had a lot of time. Even running out, trying to get outside, they haven't. You can see it's usually Iowa State has a lot to go on third. They've only made two of ten. And Nebraska's coming with a bunch of red jerseys. Rosenfeld looking for a scream. What a catch by Davis. Trying to shake and bake his way to the first down, but Deion Booker says not today. The sophomore from Oceanside, California. But there you saw the hands of Darren Davis, and he does have great hands, and he's able to take a big hit. Here you're going to hear the sound of Darren Davis getting hit on this screen. Great job by Deion Booker out of Oceanside, California. And we all know his brother Michael was the first-round draft choice of the Atlanta Falcons a couple of years ago. And again, Gomez standing on his 23-yard line. Set to kick it away. Joe Walker back on the 17. Not much wind here at Memorial Stadium tonight. It's a perfect night for football. He's had two block, but not this one, and he gets it away. Fumble. The ball is loose. Nebraska thinks they got it right at the 21-yard line, and they do. Another dangerous effort. Second one in a row on a punt. But we've got a timeout, 525 left in the third, and the Huskers are drumming away on Iowa State. Muscles on offense. Well, now Frank Solich has the luxury with 518 left to play in the third to play a couple of new players, including Joe Christman, the quarterback. 
Although, really, the official number two quarterback is Bobby Newcomb. They said if anything should happen to Crouch in a tight game, he would play. But still getting some of the young guys to get some reps already doesn't hurt. No, because you, there's nothing like game experience. You know, you can practice all you want, you know, against the black shirt defense. But there's nothing like the 75,000 plus people in here that gets the adrenaline going and it puts a lot of pressure mentally on a young quarterback. It's a great experience. Well, Christman's going to be indoctrinated. Welcome to the Big 12, Joe. As he is dumped, the second sack of the evening for Iowa State. Kevin Durandi coming from that left end spot. But when you talk about offense of the decade, you have to talk about Nebraska. They are not afraid to put points on the board, and they've done it a lot of times. In, sure. fa in fact, the highest yeah. scoring in the 90s. You know, and it's amazing because Nebraska's not a passing team, but you would think Florida and Florida State would have scored more points, quote, in the 90s. But it's Nebraska, and this is not going to hurt that statistic to score tonight. Not a bit. Christian this time just hands off to Diedrich, the youngster out of Scarborough, Ontario, Canada. And they're saying he was down at the 40, and that'll be good enough for a first down. And we saw this young man in Missouri, and they like him, the redshirt freshman. I like him, too, watching him in practice. He Again, he looks like the cookie-cutter mold-type Nebraska tailback. I think he's a guy that, if they end up moving Alexander to fullback, he will alternate in the future with Buckhalter. Buckhalter's only a junior. He's a freshman. He'll have his run for at least two years. Absolutely. And he's fast. Got a good build too, a six foot two fifteen, and he'll try it again. Bangs his way, takes a couple of hits as he makes his way up to the 45 yard line. Give him five more yards. He came in with 61 yards rushing on 15 carries, just about four yards there. Carry. When Nebraska practices, they have three running drills or three offensive drills going on at one time. So some of the young players, like a Crispin at quarterback and like a Dietrich at tailback, get maximum repetitions. They're not standing around watching the first team guys practice. They're practicing all right. the time too. And I think that really helps the development of young players. Closing in on three minutes left in the third quarter. Christman will try pass number two and it's incomplete at the 48 yard line and Eric Clemens you have an injury update for Iowa State and it's a costly one. It is a costly one wide receiver Damian Gross has a left shoulder stinger he's got an ice pack on it he of course will not return for the game he did have a pretty big 50 yard pass reception earlier but nothing much has helped their offense in this one. And that hurts and considering that Nebraska has not been scored upon at homecoming since October 21st 1995 Kansas State was the last team to do it. They did it in the fourth quarter. Crouch can only sit, watch, get a little smile. Didn't even have to put the makeup on tonight. He could have left the black uh, black stuff off the face. Didn't need it. Deidre, right side, big hole. Crosses the 50 down to the 45 to the 44-yard line. Pick up of about 10 on the play. You know, you look at Crouch now. Why would a guy wear the black underneath his eyes for a night game? And that's not even the old shoe polish like we, you and I used to wear. Those are patches now that they put underneath their eyes. Look at that stuff on his cheek there. Those are patches. I guess it's so when he goes out tonight, yeah. he doesn't have to worry about getting all the shoe polish yeah. off his face. I used to think that shoe polish was cool. I thought it was too. Let the women know you play. Up yeah. to the 42 yard. I think I like it though when Dan Hayden felt the kicker had it on. Look at everybody's got it They all got it. In fact, it, look at Eric Clemens has it on, I think. I think look, Eric that, that stuff right there is a patch that they get. Now, some guy who invented that is probably a billionaire right now. <laughs> oh, man. What, how simple. We should just put literally the shoe polish I know. or the black dirt or whatever it was. You got a patch so you can breathe. You got a patch so you can see. Whatever. Joe Crispin at quarterback, 208 left in the third, second down and eight. Even though you have a reserve quarterback, they're still moving the football because of this man. Somebody lost their head. Bounding around Kevin Durant. He better put the helmet back on. That could hurt. Robert Brannon on the stop. What's this do, though, for Nebraska? Now, they have a week off before they play Texas. And, of course, coming up next year on Fox Net, the Ducks and the Bruins. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, James Lofton standing by, but for Frank Solich, he has a week off before before he plays the Longhorns down in Austin. It's the perfect time. It's the middle of the year. You get a couple guys that have minor injuries healed up. 
and you get clicking and you get ready for a run at the championship here at the end of the year. Third think, down and six passes incomplete. The other thing that you do, Ron, excuse me, is that you self-scout yourself. You get a chance to really evaluate your first six games of the year and say from a tendency standpoint, we've done this too much, not enough here. You, you, you tweak a couple things in your offense and your defense. But the one thing you don't tweak is those guys right there because they're playing great, those black shirts on the Nebraska defense. You continue to get those guys to run around, which I'm sure Charlie McBride, George Darlington, and the defensive coaches will do. Technically, this is the first punt for Dan Haydenfeld. There's a penalty on his other first one. Strong footed kicker. They're calling a fair catch. Hits Nebraska right at the five yard line. Bounds into the end zone. They can't come up with it. They did everything they could. They, Dewan could, uh, Gross tried to run it down. Couldn't get the speed to get it. And we have a timeout. 116 left to play in the third quarter. And Nebraska leads Iowa State by a bunch. So far tonight with 116 left in the third, the Huskers lead 42 to nothing. They led 28 nothing at halftime, and you can see the top 25 today. Kansas State a winner over Kansas. A&M takes care of Baylor down at College Station. Texas at, over Oklahoma at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. It was a good football game. Walker back in at quarterback. He's going down the middle. He is going deep, and it is almost intercepted. Intended for Kenyatta Burris. Deion Booker on the coverage and you can see total defense how about the big 12 teams are well you see six teams nebraska at three iowa state at five oki state a and m kansas state and texas all in the top 10 in the nation in total defense that's just outstanding it just shows you what kind of athletes play on defense in this big 12. i think this is a quote a defensive league right now yeah. Second down and 10, final 69 seconds of the third. Inside, and again, the black shirts are there to wrap up Darren Davis, who is a little frustrated at this point. Next Saturday, all getting underway at 3.30 Eastern time on Fox Sports Net. Dan McCarney knows that he can still win some football games in the Big 12, and Walker will call a timeout. That'll be an important game for both Missouri and Iowa State. 24 seconds left in the third. Timeout's been called. <laughs> rolling out for Iowa State, throws across the field, and the pass is complete at the 38-yard line. J.J. Moses, his first catch of the evening, and that was a pretty good effort by Derek Walker. Yeah, because Jamie Burrow, number 48, the middle linebacker, just leveled Walker on that. Walker out on the corner, Burrow scraping to containment, just leveled them. 12 seconds left in the quarter. Moses has been very quiet tonight. The junior out of Waterloo, Iowa. That's his sixth reception of the year. You know, against Kansas State, Ron, he ran four reverses for over 60 yards. So they uncorked him, so to speak, against Kansas State. Have been very unsuccessful at being able to do that tonight. Well, the clock says three zeros, which means the end of the third quarter. And the officials wanting to make sure about that. For seconds on the clock. Now they're going to add some time. Started the clock after the first down and <laughs> weren't supposed to do that. Now Dan McCartney says, nah, you don't have to put it on. Go ahead. Derek Walker engineering the attack. Now it's the end of the quarter. Eric Crouch has had a good game throwing the football and also running the pigskin. He has a touchdown run, and his team leads 42-0 with 15 minutes left to be played. We head to the final quarter. Nebraska leading Iowa State 42 to nothing, along with Darty Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin, and he gets the most creative award for tonight. First homecoming experience. Get that young man one. some free tickets I'm and a, you. a flight to Los Angeles. When was the last time you saw somebody <laughs> wear a tank top in Lincoln in, November, in October, though, too? But a good sign. Very yeah. creative. Great weather. Walker keeps it right side. Looks for a block as he crosses the 50 down to the 48-yard line, and they are in Nebraska territory, and that's good enough for a first down. Now, that's what the coaches want to do with Walker right there, almost like Kansas State did a year ago with Michael Bishop. Allow him just to pick a place to go run the football because he's big, 
He's strong and he's at the ball down high school just outside of Houston. You know, that's one of the trends right now in college football, allowing the quarterback to run the football from the shotgun formation. Couldn't do it with Todd Bandauer in the last couple of years. Well, the straight drop back passer, Rosenfels and Walker give him a little more versatility in that QB position. Walker's pass is complete. It'll actually be a loss of about three on the play. Well, Jason Ward that time made a great rush up the middle on Derek Walker. One thing about Ward now, he's only a sophomore, but watch him right here, number 70. He's a backup, but he also has a black shirt, which means they regard him as a starter. 6'2", 280 pounds, and he had a great impact last year to the defense as a freshman, and his position coach is Charlie McBride, and Charlie loves him. He thinks he's got three starters in the middle there yeah. with Lohr, Warren, and Kaiser. I like the word they use, he's a soldier. Yeah. That's a good word. He's a big, strong, fast soldier. Loss of five, second and 15. Look out. Fumble. Nebraska has it. They're advancing it. Goodbye. Joe Walker forced it. Des Moines Adams, the freshman out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, with the recovery and the TD. And they can smile on the sidelines. That'll leave a mark on Derek Walker. You're going to see Walker right here, number 25, come from the backside on a strong safety blitz. But you know what's great about that? He goes high up on Walker, which enables him to knock the football out of his hands. And obviously, Adams picks it up and runs it in. The one thing about Nebraska's defense, they not only stop you, but they score. Yeah. You know, the special teams and the defense for Nebraska score points. Well, the defense coming into this game has scored 16 points. They had a few more out of them. 13-32 left to play in the ball game. Nebraska about to hang half a hundred on Iowa State. 9 and nothing is our score. 13-32 left to play in the ball game. Artie Gigantino joins me once again. And Artie, three, four weeks ago, there were so many questions about this Nebraska team. I think the last few weeks, the questions have been answered. Yeah, because right now they're in a groove on offense, number one. But number two, they score points on special teams and on defense. Their special teams tonight have been dominant. Their defense is flying around all over this football field. Well, Iowa State getting the kick. Getting up to about the 25-yard line, and once again, the red jerseys surround everybody. Kenyatta Burris on the return, and Iowa State will take over. Trailing 49 to nothing. You know, you, you look at Nebraska, they blocked two punts this year, two fumble recoveries, and two sacks tonight. It's, it's just amazing the statistics that they gather on defense here at Nebraska. And you know, speed kills, and when you're fast on defense, you make a lot of big plays, and you cause a lot of turnovers. First down and 10. Rosenfels back in at quarterback. Davis, that is the story of the evening. Prior to that run, he only had 40 yards running the football. And it has been the black shirts surrounding the white shirts. And you're going to see DeJuan Gross, number five. He just blanks out number 86, Chris Anthony, because Walker is looking down the field for him. But look at number 25, Joe Walker, just stripped the ball from behind. It resulted in a touchdown and a sack because of the great coverage downfield. Charlie McBride gets a lot of credit for the great defense here at Nebraska, but he gets a lot of good help. And secondary coach George Darlington is one of the best secondary coaches in all of this country in college football. Three-step drop, Rosenfels complete to Brantley. Stiff arms his way up to the 50-yard line, and that's where they'll mark him out. Brantley did not have a catch prior to tonight, and that is his reception. Rosenfels, nice job on the three-step. You know, when you're a coach like Dan McCartney and you're in a situation like this when it's 49 to nothing, you have to make a decision. What do you want to get out of the fourth quarter? Now, I know Dan doesn't want to get anybody injured, and I know he wants to try to continue to execute his offense, but you also want to get some of your younger players some experience in this type of situation. And right now, he hasn't substituted very much, but I'm sure you'll see it as his fourth quarter goes on. 
Rosenfeld the pump fake throwing deep has a man and it is intercepted but a penalty flag has been thrown. Go on gross with the interception cutting across the field and he is going to be dragged down at the Iowa State 45 yard line. You know Ron at the way everybody's walking and the way everybody's pointing it looks like it's going to be pass interference against gross. And that is exactly the call. That would have been Gross's first interception of his career. And you see the matchup again, Gross against Chris Anthony, and he pushes him a little bit there at the yeah. end. I mean, it's both players competing for the football. Anthony, six foot three, Gross, 5'10. Gross gives him a little bit of a shove there at the end. I think that was the correct call, and Frank Solich doesn't like it. He doesn't like the call, but I think looking at the replay, like you said, both players were battling, but Gross was the second one and he got caught. The fine line in all of football yeah. and these pass interferences and defensive holding downfield. Very, very difficult for the officials to call and be accurate all the time. That time, even the officials were accurate. Only the fourth time this evening that Iowa State's been able to get into Nebraska territory. Davis breaks up over the middle, look out. Cuts back, looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa State. Only the second rushing touchdown given up by the Nebraska defense this year. Nebraska got caught in a blitz that time, and then the gap was created inside. You're going to see Davis now gets the ball, and he cuts it back. And he does some nifty open field running there to make a touchdown. 35 yards on the touchdown run by Darren Davis. That'll help the stats a little bit. 49 to 6 with 12 10 left to play in the ball game. Mike McKnight will get a chance to kick the extra point. Splits the uprights. Now Darren Davis had 42 yards prior to that. Oh, baby, Misty's. <laughs> Mist play Misty's for me. You know what? They're still recovering from the last time Kellen was there. He ran That's out right. of stakes. <laughs> last year, the 98th season. He is down. Put his knee down. You can stop. Larry Henderson put his knee down and got caught. And Eric Clemens on the sideline with a little national car rental game summary, Eric. I tell you what, you don't need a game summary to tell you that it's Nebraska dominance. Look at Eric Crouch. Three touchdowns. I mean, he just gets better every week. Darren Davis pads the stats a little bit with that touchdown run. Two passing plays over 20 yards for Iowa State, but too many penalties. They've shot themselves in the foot a lot tonight, fellas. That's why we have that 49 to 7 score. And stake doesn't sound too bad, does it? It doesn't. <laughs> Not a bit. Some of that good red meat in us. 12-03 left to play. Nebraska takes over first and ten from their own nine-yard line. And the Iowa State defense standing tall on that one. Reggie Hayward still getting some playing time. Diedrich the ball carrier. Hayward on the stop. You know, you talk about improving the athletes on the defense and offensive line for Iowa State. Reggie Hayward, number 15, is going to be an all-Big 12 player this year for Iowa State. He's big, he's strong, he's athletic. He was a very highly recruited young athlete out of Dalton, Illinois for Dan McCartney and his Iowa State Cyclone. Keep your eye on 15, he's a very good player. Diedrich showing how he can stop and change directions, but we have a penalty flag thrown right in the middle of the pack, which will probably mean holding against the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. You know, we wonder what happened to Eric. <laughs> you know? Look at this guy now. How does he do that? I don't know how Eric got in there. That's pretty decent. That's little red. Little red's a little fired up. <laughs> is, is he dancing? Is that, is that a dance move? I don't know where he's sick. One of the two. <laughs> when the offensive line from Nebraska gets graded, they get graded in about four areas. One is pancakes. One is how many sacks you allow. Third thing is penalties that you commit. And the fourth thing is the perfect plays in mm -hmm. which you execute the offensive scheme. 
Milt Teneper, the offensive line coach, is not going to like that last penalty. Not a bit. They try the right side, and again, Iowa State stacks them up. Maybe a pickup of three on the play. We still have more football coming straight ahead here on FoxNet. Immediately following our game, we head you out to the Pac-10. As Kevin Frazier mentioned, it is a must win for both Oregon and UCLA. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and James Lofton are standing by for Pac-10 action right here on Fox Sports Net immediately following our game. Well, Pac-10 still, that's yeah. a toss-up, isn't Both it? coaches, Mike Bellotti at Oregon yeah. and Bob Toledo at UCLA are very offensive-minded. I would look for another 1,000 yards maybe tonight between both of those teams because right now they're both not very good on defense, but both excellent on offense, not only in scheme, but in the way the plays are called by those two head coaches that are offensive-minded. Frank Solich, nothing tricky about this as we head to the 10-minute mark of the fourth quarter, keeping it on the ground, and again, it is the Diedrich Carey, Hayward on the stop combination. But this Nebraska offense under Frank Solich is play calling so much different than when Tom Osborne did it. Of course, Tom did it for 25 years, plus six with Bob Devaney, and I think Frank's gotten into his own groove within his own personality. Well, now. yeah, it's a complex, complicated, intricate offense, and people just think it's an option offense with a little bit of power, but not so fast. It's a very involved offensive football scheme. Hayden Feltz set to kick it away, standing in his own end zone. Line drive, this should be returned, but they're going to let it bounce. And it'll go out, they mark it at the 38-yard line. Well, coaching the Nebraska Cornhuskers can be enjoyable if you're winning, and Frank Solich says he has enjoyed the experience so far. Ask it through my uh, years as an assistant, um, through my year and a half as, as head coach. Uh, I think the, uh, the reason it's been that way is because of the players, uh, their attitude, their approach to the game, and also uh, our coaches, uh, you know, their approach to the game and, and, and their attitude. Uh, I think we've got great chemistry here. The attitude has been tremendous, and with that in mind, it's uh, enjoyable to come to work every day. Now, when he was a running back coach, he had nine NCAA rushing titles, seven of the last ten, in fact, belonged to a Frank Solich running back group. You know, it's a, it's a group effort, though, here at Nebraska. Tom mm -hmm. Osborne called the plays, like you said, for a long time. But Frank, as an assistant, helped refine this Nebraska offense, along with offensive line coach Milt Teneper. And you know, you talk about Tom Osborne, the great Tom Osborne, now retired. And you think about how good he was here. Well, Frank Solich can go 12 and 0 during the next 20 years. He'll be 75 years of age, and he'll still be three wins shy of what Tom Osborne accomplished in Nebraska, you know, which and, is amazing. And, and, you know, and he started off now 14 and 4 as the head coach. Tonight it'll be 15 and 4. But the most important thing for him is he's 10 and 1, or he will be 10 and 1 at home. Davis stays on his feet, cuts back, closes in on the 50-yard line up to about the 48-yard line. The first hit was put on by Ben Butenbeck, the senior out of Hastings, Nebraska. And Davis looks like he will be about half a yard, maybe a yard short. Well, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer of college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed by Ken Fouts. College football Saturday studio show is produced by Lloyd Maxson. Directed by Joe Whitus, the Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thank you, folks. Third down, just about a yard. Davis spins, leans forward, and may have gotten it. Joe Walker put on the lick to start things off. Coming up from that rover back spot. Let's see where the spot is, and pretty lenient spot. First down, Iowa State. You saw the spinning of Darren Davis that we talked about earlier in the broadcast. He does a great job when he makes contact of spinning out of tacklers. It's a Barry Sanders type move that I think this young guy has really perfected. Well, he's over 100 yards, 117 yards on 18 carries unofficially. So he is only the second running back to go over the century mark. Of course, a lot of it coming on the touchdown run here in the fourth quarter. Three-step drop. Walker's going to have the quarterback draw. Stays on his feet. Crosses the 35 down the, or the 45 down to the 39-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds by Mark Bedrill, the sophomore out of Gregory, South Dakota. And you see the athleticism there of Walker being able to take off. We we commented before about 
Pete Hayner, the offensive coordinator, wanting to do things out of the shotgun formation with Walker, very similar to what Kansas State and Ron Hudson and Bill Snyder did with uh, Michael Bishop a year ago. He's got the, the speed. It must be a Blinn Junior College thing, huh? Yeah. Michael Bishop, of course, went to Blinn Junior. Seven minutes left to play in a ball game. Rosenfels now into the lineup. Throws it out on the flat. The pass is complete to Brantley. Brantley inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line. You know, as we look at Walker, he obviously hurt a hand on that last play because the, the, the trainers are taking a look at it, and he came off the field on his own. So he either dinged an, an, a wrist or a hand or a finger there. You know, you look at the total yardage tonight, Nebraska's got 462, obviously. Iowa State's got 267. But coming into this game, you know, Iowa State had, was averaging 434 yards mm -hmm. a game, which was 19th in the country. They fake the little trickery. They keep it to Davis. Bounces to the outside, to the 20-yard line, puts the shoulder down, and gets a couple more yards. Inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. He's not afraid to put the shoulder down, is he, Art? No, it ought to be a great sound here in a second because you, that's contact. That's plastic on plastic. And you know, the fact that the game is out of reach for all practical purposes for Iowa State, they haven't quit playing hard. No, they haven't. And it's it's like I said before, I think Dan McCartney wants to establish something here in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. that he can carry over into the Missouri game next week. First and 10 balls on the 18. Iowa State trying to get into the end zone for the second time. Wide open down to the 10-yard line. Chris Anthony, the junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Anthony had three catches coming into tonight's game. And he has three catches tonight, four catches tonight. So he's doubled his output for the rest of the season. Of course, the Ducks and the Bruins standing by coming up next. Here on Fox Sports Net, stay with us for that. Complete day of college football. Frank Solich, and, you know, he, he said, hey, we need a week off. And they're going to get a week off next week. And like we talked about, he's going to use it wisely by getting some of these guys with small injuries back on their feet, back playing. Hand off, Davis up the middle, fights his way down to the one-yard line. That'll be a first and goal for Iowa State. And you know, it's funny, that it's a blowout, but not many of the 77,000 have left Memorial Stadium. They're starting to kind of trickle out, but these people want to stay to the end. Well, they love football here, obviously. And I don't know if the Nebraska fans are the best fans in the country, but I know there's, there are no better fans than the Absolutely. Nebraska fans. These people love college football, and this is just an awesome, awesome arena in which to play college football. Davis, touchdown, Iowa State. Darren Davis, two rushing touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And it's a 49-13, but he's not afraid to take a couple of hits. But well, he never gets knocked no, off the No, he's not. The guy, if you look at him, and besides the spinning and the toughness, he's got a wonderful balance for a running back. Doesn't get knocked off his feet, and that's a great characteristic for a running back to have. I mean, I really do believe it's got something to do with number one, his, his body type. You know, he's only 5'8", but he's a good, solid 195, but also the wrestling background. Well, Davis has a couple of touchdowns, and it's a 49-14 game. The Huskers of 5'11 left to be played. Gross awaiting the kick of Iowa State as Iowa State trails 49-14. Stephen Knox will now kick it off, getting a little play in time. Has kicked a couple of point after touchdowns so far, but now he's going to get his chance to kick it off and keep a look at one of the guys who's just running down the field hard trying to hit something. This will be Larry Henderson. And he is going to be tackled by the ankles at 13-yard line. But Nebraska has been dominant in all phases of the game, including specialty teams. And, you know, special teams set the tempo as they block a punt here for a touchdown. Third punt block of the year. Also on offense, we talked about the diversity of this Nebraska offense, not just running the option, throwing passes, but then coming back when you have to with the quarterback, Eric Crouch, scoring on the option. And then big plays on defense. 
not only making plays, but making and scoring touchdowns with their defensive right. unit. This is a complete football team at Nebraska. Very focused football team. When you look at their, their practices are very efficient. There's not a lot of goofing off. And they're very, very focused. Christman stays at quarterback, hit as he throws it. But Ron, I think, I think one of the things that's happened to them is that they were in a state of shock from what happened last year. Mm -hmm. They lost four games here last year, and that's totally unacceptable at Nebraska. So there was a rededication. There were 140 Cornhuskers in, in Lincoln during the summer working out, and obviously not with the coaches, but in the weight room and working out on their own. So this is a rededicated, refocused football team. And that's why they're going to be 6-0 and right. very highly ranked this coming week. Well, you have to go back 30 years to find another four-loss season. Right side, Deidre keeps his feet moving. Gets up to the 25-yard line. That's the Navy on the stop. That'll be good enough for a first down. Let's take a look at Nebraska's schedule. They have the off week. Then they go down to Austin. Well, you go to Austin at Kansas. A big one against Texas A&M and Kansas State both here and then they go to Colorado this team has got a chance to go undefeated this year now, obviously they've got some hurdles along the way but they have a chance congratulations to Gary Barnett of Colorado a little overtime win over Missouri today straight ahead running the football closing in on four and a half to play in the ball game Jeff Waters on the stop and the Iowa State defense first and second teamers still getting playing time. They're still in there popping pads. Well, the one area that Iowa State still cannot compete with Nebraska in is the depth. Iowa State does not have the depth that Nebraska does. Dan McCartney, one of the things he's trying to do at Iowa State is establish that walk-on program where a lot of players come as walk-ons mm -hmm. end up on scholarships that Nebraska has. Oh, yeah, you think of the great walk-ons here in Nebraska, including guys like I am hip. And this man. Deidre crosses the 40, shoved out of bounds at the 43-yard line. All this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, a Seattle Seahawks running back Kurt Warner, one of six players in the Seahawks Ring of Fame. All-time Penn State rushing leader with 3,398 yards. It's Hardcore Football Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. And he watches Hardcore Football. And they start him young here in Lincoln. Well, I'm telling you. He probably knows the whole team by heart. Exactly. Crispin rolling out, looking for some place to go. Throws the pass, incomplete. Iowa State, pretty decent coverage. But young Joe Crispin out of Longmont, Colorado, getting some playing time, and the coaches told us that they wanted to make sure he got some reps tonight. Well, you know, one of the questions that people would ask Frank Solich here is why are you throwing? You're ahead by 49 to 14 with three minutes to go in the game, but it's the only way a young quarterback can get game-like experience throwing the football instead of just handing off. And again, some of those people out there would question Frank Solich for doing, but all he's trying to do is develop his young players. Well, Diedrich's developing. He has 70 yards running the football. He's going to add to that total. Cuts inside to the 50 down to the 47-yard line, and that'll be close to yet another Nebraska first down. They may have three 100-yard rushers tonight. Buck Calder has already crossed it. Alexander's already crossed it. Diedrich closing in on it. They only had one coming into tonight in the previous five games. Well, the other thing that they're going to get tonight is over 500 yards total offense. Coming into the game, Nebraska had been averaging 378 yards per game, which is 54th in the country, very un-Nebraska-like. But they're going to get over 500 here tonight mm -hmm. if they haven't already. Well, officially, they're 496, we see. Make that 500. Right? There you go, right there. Diedrich up to the 35-yard line before he's corralled. Pickup of 12 on the play, so he's at 86 yards carrying the football. Just a machine. That's what this offense is. You know, and one of the reasons, though, it's a machine, I believe, is the way they practice. We talked about it before. They have three drills going on at one time. So all their players can participate instead of the younger guys, the second and third teamers standing around watching the first teamers all the time. The repetitions that they get at practice makes this offense machine-like. Well, James Reed stops Diedrich. 
maybe lost a yard on the play. And you can see the total offense thus far 502 to 301. Iowa State fairly balanced. You know what though? That, that's over 800 yards in one pick yeah. for both teams. That is a lot of yardage in a football game. And Charlie the, McBride's not going to like that number 301 no, no. because coming into the game, Nebraska had only been given up 210 yards per game. Well, that's going to be a substitution penalty on Nebraska. They had a couple of youngsters coming in and out, not sure where to go, and Charlie McBride can only watch. You know, he wasn't the defense. He's not yeah, worried. No, he's, but he, you know what he wants, though? All defensive coaches in, in games like this, they want the offense to stay on the field. They just want him to stay on the field and get the game over with. And that's what that's why Charlie's a little bewildered there. He wants that offense to stay on the field. And you can see from the look on Frank Solich's face, he, he doesn't like those kind of uh, mistakes by his team, even with the big lead. Keep it on the ground. Diedrich just lowers the head, lowers the boom, gets up to the 35-yard line for a pickup of six. One of the, the most difficult things for a head coach to coach is penalties because players don't commit penalties on purpose. They don't go out consciously saying, hey, I'm going to commit a foul here. It's one of the toughest things for a head coach to coach is penalties. Well, Diedrich has 91 yards running the football and 97 yards running the football, and he's been taken out on third down and nine for the Huskers. One and a half to play in the football game. Clock not moving fast enough for Iowa State, I'm sure. Trying the run side, trying to get some running room. Carry was by Matt Albertson, who's really listed as a, an eye back, getting some playing time. Albertson out of York, Nebraska, just a freshman. Take it back North Platte, Nebraska. And he's still a freshman. Final 60 seconds. See if Nebraska can do something else offensively. Diedrich looking for 100. And he is going to be stacked up after a pickup of about two on the play. Here's the dynasty of Nebraska. Now those numbers are telling, Artie. You know, 71 and 3 at home. I mean, that to me is just unbelievable. Plus 30 consecutive nine win seasons. And, you know, a lot of that is because of the last statistic there 231 consecutive sellouts. That is called a home field advantage, which is why Nebraska wants to play six or seven games every year here in Memorial Stadium. Those are impressive numbers. I mean, you look at those, and you know, we, you and I have seen them a couple times in the last four or five years, and you still have to scratch your head and say, that's impressive. Rosenfels in the quarterback, throws it off in the flat to Brantley. Stays on his feet as the clock says 35 seconds, and he is knocked out of bounds, and the clock stops. But you know what's the most impressive thing about the whole Nebraska, whatever this is here, is that there's only been three head coaches. You know, when you talk about Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne, and now Frank Solich. Well, the fans are booing because Iowa State has called a timeout. I think that may have been unintentional. And you can see the timeouts remaining. Iowa State, Nebraska, it's a moot point for Dan McCartney, who has a week to regroup before he travels to Columbia, Missouri, to take on the... Missouri Tigers, losers in overtime today to the Colorado Buffaloes. You know, we talk about head coaches, Ron, and, you know, who was the head coach before Bill Devaney, about Devaney, do you know? Bill Jennings. There you go, you looked it up. There, I thought I'd get you. No. Never get you. <laughs> Actually, he's an Oklahoma grad, which is a little ironic. I wonder if he knew what the potential was here when, yeah. when, <laughs> yeah. when he left the head coaching job. That's a good point. Now we understand he went from here to Kansas as an assistant. Does that mean he was asked to leave? <laughs> but whatever happened, Bob Devaney set the foundation. Tom Osborne refined it, and now Frank Solich is continuing it. In case you're wondering, Tom teaching a class here at the University of Nebraska, writing books. And just a true gentleman, and uh, I think one of the, obviously, the great coaches in the history of college football. Final 27 seconds. In case you just joined us, Nebraska led 21-0 at the end of the first quarter. It's been all downhill then. Rosenfels pass incomplete.
Intended for number 19, Craig Campbell, the wide receiver of Iowa State. What Iowa State's got to take out of this game, though? Okay, they're gonna their record now is gonna be three and two. But what they've got to say now is we've got six games left on our schedule. Mm -hmm. and it's got to be a six-game season for them because they can end up very, you know, nine and two. They can end up eight and three. So you lost to Nebraska and Kansas State. Go play Missouri, Colorado, Texas, Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Try to win five out of those last six. Go to a bowl game, and everybody goes into the offseason feeling great about Iowa State football. And it'd be well-deserved for Coach McCartney, who's put so much effort into this program. Bass is complete. That was complete to number 19, Craig Campbell. The sophomore out of Santa Fe Springs, California, and Iowa State's going to burn their final timeout. Very interesting. Read into it for me there, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pass on Wait, this one? No. They don't, I, have, they don't I, have an early flight or something? What they want to do is obviously execute two or three more plays and go from there. And, you know, Dan McCartney's just trying, just trying to help his offense get a little better. The Ducks and UCLA coming up straight ahead. So don't turn the dial because we'll send you out to the Pac-10 where Steve Fiziok, Tom Ramsey, and James Lofton are standing by to call that very important game in the Pac-10. That produced almost a thousand yards in total offense last week. And uh, homecoming. You know what? This home. guy right here is becoming a star. That's, a, that's a pretty good likeness. Is it Dr. Evil? Is that? I don't, I don't go to the movies. Austin Powers, Dr. Evil. And the crowd that is left cheering as Rosenfels will go from the shotgun. Final 15 seconds. Movement on the offensive line. They'll back him up five yards. Right under the snap. False start on the offense. Still fourth down. And Frank Solich can only look up at the clock. Is has a little time now before he takes on UT, and he, oh, we saw a smile there, Ernie. There was one, huh? There's two. That may be a record. Frank is a very, very serious man. But he does have a great sense of humor. Rosenfels scrambling, big chase, lets it fly, pass is complete, and hit immediately. Reggie Moore the on the receiving end, and with six seconds left, Iowa State quickly Lining up for another play, and they're determined to try to get another six on the board, aren't they? Oh, yeah, and you know, they've got 318 yards so far in total offense. Here they're in a Hail Mary formation with the three receivers to the right of your screen. They kill the clock, and now they're going to get one final play. And look, obviously, for them to go to the end zone on this final play. Four seconds left. And Sage Rosenfels, who been chased around all day he and Derek Walker by the black shirt defense didn't have a whole lot of time to do a whole lot of anything and Nebraska defense by Charlie McBride ever so dominating he said he just loves these guys he reminds him of a bunch of junkyard dogs and says he'll line up behind them any day of the week. final play of the football game Rosenfeld buying some time He's going to let it fly, looking in the end zone for anybody, and it'll be intercepted in the end zone, and that's the way the football game will end. Frank Solich and company remain undefeated. They go to 6-0, 3-0 in Big 12 play, and they should move up to the number three team in the country. Already final thoughts. Final thoughts are they're a dominant team in all three areas. Special teams, offense is finally back into rhythm, and obviously on defense. And the most important thing, Ron, they score with their special teams, and they score with their defense. Nebraska has a chance to be there in contention for the national championship at the end of the year. 524 yards offense. A block punt all helped Nebraska for the win tonight the final again 49 to 14 just a reminder coming up on the other side of the break we will have the Oregon Ducks taking on the Bruins of UCLA coming up right here on Fox Sports Net for Eric Clemens and Artie Gigantino I'm Rob Thulin thanks for watching stay with us Pac-10 football is next